Good morning, my lovelies. Uh, welcome to Step by Step with Sarah Jane. I'm so pleased you chose to um, tune in to my latest video. Um, and please hit subscribe. You know, I want as many people to join our health and fitness journey together and uh, support as many people as we can. Uh, I've been overwhelmed by all of your support so far and I just want to say thank you very much. Um, for those of you that don't know, I've lost around 12 stone in body weight. I used to weigh 21 stone and basically my weight was disabling me. Uh, I've turned my life around, um, I've lost all this weight and I love my life now and I'm living the life I always dreamed of. Uh, I feel like I've been set free from my addiction to food and I just want to help as many people as I can. When I was uh, overweight, I was one of those people that pretended to be happy. I was always the jolly fat girl and uh, you know I played that part very well and underneath it was just, um, I lived a lie. I was really unhealthy. A GP told me I was killing myself, so I had to make changes. Up until that point, I'd um, tried many <coughs> diets, and today, that's something I, I'm going to talk to you about today, is slimming clubs. Um, my various views on them, and uh, kind of how they affected me, really. Was it a... Uh, positive and negative it's for both this is simply not a video where i'm going to be bashing diets or bashing slimming clubs or it's my experience of them um i've tried various slimming clubs for the kind of types where you pay your weekly subscription and you go along you queue up to get on these scales and I was very young at first, my first experience of one of those, uh, I was 14. And um, the absolute fear and knot in my stomach at going on those scales, I can remember that like it was yesterday. And I still don't have a good relationship with weighing scales now. That it, it, it brings a massive anxiety over me that's never really left me. And um, it was like my happiness depended on this number on the scale. So I could go in there, I would feel quite happy. You know, think, oh, I've been really good this week and eating everything on my list. And then if the number on the scale wasn't right, if I hadn't dropped weight, it would be like the end of my world, catastrophe. And then that would lead me into another cycle of craving sweet food, thought it was my friend, and I would go and binge. So that's kind of my relationship with weights, weighing scales. Um, and I don't weigh myself very often now, about once a month, just to keep a check on things. But the positives of the Slim Clubs were, it taught me a lot about food, a lot about processed foods, about how Processed foods are not good for our bodies to eat because our body is a food processing unit. And when we eat processed foods, it can't process them. So the, the slimming clubs that I went to were good because they taught me about cooking from scratch. Sauces being made from scratch, not jars. They taught me that jars sauces and you know processed foods are full of sugar and salt and really addictive and really a lot of hidden calories so you could for instance buy a jar of tomato sauce be in five times as many calories as if you made your own tomato sauce and also be consuming a lot of sugar and salt which is highly addictive so those kind of things it educated me so they were real positives that I took away from those kinds of slimming clubs. And um, the negatives for me were the whole humiliation of getting on the scales. I personally, for me, my weight is a very personal subject. It was something that took me many, many years to be able to be confident enough to speak to other women about. And now that I do, 
I find a lot of people will open up to me and that that's what really brings me joy about doing this support group is that I had nobody I had absolutely nobody to talk to I felt great shame in my addiction to food and uh, you know that that was something I, I kind of kept secret but clearly when you're walking around and your body is 21 stone it's not a secret that you're addicted to food because everyone can see it you know I'm quite sure we all work with addicts and their addiction may be things that are not visible to the eye. They could be addicted to gambling, they could be addicted to drugs, alcohol and still relatively function relatively normal and um, it's not visible for us to see. We don't know that. It's a hidden addiction whereas my addiction to food was very visible because I wore my weight, I wore my addiction, my sugar turned to fat and my body was carrying it around. So I felt great shame for many years. And I think that whole queuing up, getting on a scale, feeling awful if the numbers didn't say what I wanted to, all of that kind of bought into that shame and negativity. So that whole thing for me just really didn't work. And as long as I ate food on the list and I lost weight, it was great. The minute I didn't do what? the plan said to do the minute I stopped or came off my diet then I just returned to all of my old habits the reasons why none of these plans worked for me was because I never addressed my reasons why and that took many years of soul searching for me to discover it really was a lack of not feeling good enough not loving myself and trying to fill that emotional void with food and oh, you know no amount of food was ever going to make me love myself it was by addressing my issues and changing my lifestyle that's when it's become really successful and I started with small sustainable stage changes you know as simple as walking for half an hour a day I would wait until it was dark because I was embarrassed about my size I didn't want to be seen and I'd walk for half an hour a day Dead, dead easy to do, led to me losing a bit of weight, feeling fitter. That led me on to, oh God, that feels so much better. I feel so much healthier. And that feeling is phenomenal. It makes you feel more confident. It makes you feel happier. And, uh, you know, I just want other people to feel like that now. Then started increasing my water, got a bit fitter, a bit stronger. Again, that positive cycle starts going upwards and you just want to continue to keep going and going but that's very easy to do once you get going but the negative cycle of feeling down and feeling low about yourself I found the whole diet industry was very good at perpetuating that negative cycle and would very very often lead me back into you know um, binge eating comfort eating because I found it just made me obsessed with food. It would be the first thing I thought about when I woke up. I'd be thinking, I mustn't eat this today, I mustn't eat this today. Then the last thing I would think about when I went to bed, because I would be thinking, I'm still really hungry. I, I, I've used all my points up or I've had my allowance for the day. I'm, I, I can't eat anything else. It just made me even more obsessed with food, whereas I was a food addict anyway. And all this diet and all this obsession about food, for me, it just perpetuated the panic and it, it just, it didn't ever work. So no diet I ever went on worked. I went on meal replacements, which was the whole other thing. I think um, it messed, oh my God, I, I used to have like three milkshakes a day and I don't think I went to the toilet for about two weeks. You know, you think, God, what are you doing to your metabolism with that? It, it can't be any good for you. It just can't. And again, I'd be absolutely starving. And so I would go into that binge cycle of being starving. So just eating huge volumes of food. And again, my stomach would be in agony trying to process all that food because I hadn't had any food for like 10 days. So that was a whole nother thing cycle that was just a nightmare and I was very very young I'd, I'd done the meal replacement thing before I was 16 
and uh, looking back I actually wasn't even very overweight I, I just had a woman's body at a, a young age and yeah I think the damage that I did and, and that perpetuating of the starvation binge starvation binge guilt shame cycle it just went round and round and round so the small sustainable changes and the more looking at the reasons why are the things that have really helped for me to sustain the changes have been small one at a time part of the reason why my group is called step by step is because I literally just did one thing at a time one small change at a time didn't want to you know do everything in one day whereas before when I'd tried to lose weight I wanted to do everything really quickly you know I want to lose a stone within a fortnight and if I hadn't lost a stone within a fortnight I saw myself as a failure and we go on and on and on I didn't I didn't even think about that I just would think right I'm gonna I'm gonna lose seven pounds however long it takes and I'm gonna lose a half a stone and that's it and that's all I focused on was little baby steps and that's what worked for me and I, I can't begin to tell you enough you need to get that whole diet mindset out of your head and look at your life how you want to be happier how you want to be healthier how you want to be fitter make small steps every day to be in the person you want to be you deserve it you are as good as everyone else and you deserve that life and if I can do it so can you I was a working man you know my, my dad means the world to me I, w I was trying to be the best possible daughter to him trying to be the best mum to my children trying to be the best employee with my career and so all of that was eating away at me trying to be the best version of that and really once I started focusing on my health and fitness all of those other things became better as a result of being fitter and healthier. I was a calmer mum, I was a happier daughter, um, a more thoughtful friend because all of my inner turmoil and my addiction to food was getting taken care of quite naturally and the impact on the other areas of my life were massive and probably things that have changed that I never even realised. I'm more confident, I'm happier, I'm more outgoing um, I'm, I'm more adventurous in the things that I do in life now so yeah I, I felt like my addiction to food kept me a prisoner it kept me in a place it caged me um, and by breaking down that addiction to food by setting myself free from it it's opened up a whole nother life and it's a fantastic life that I cherish every single day and I hope that by being part of this step-by-step -step group it, I can help you too you know I want to help you I want to support you I want to give you handy hints and tips of how you can do this because you can I have every faith in you and um, like I say please subscribe to my channel hit subscribe hit like hit share tell all your friends about it um, I think the biggest difference for me is I'm just a normal working 50 year old woman that has literally worked her ass off and uh, living her best life and if I can do this so can you. So please get the word out there, please um, keep watching all these YouTube videos, my next one's going to be brilliant, I'm going to do a Friday night with my friends and just sit and chat about the things that we do to be the healthiest versions of ourselves and hopefully it will all help you. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that my positive hints and tips and my experience help you. And whatever you do today, please, I hope you have a healthy, happy day. Speak to you soon. Lots of love, Sarah. Bye.